in Portugal, is that correct? That's correct. Um, and did Mr. Edmondson ask you to f track down the person who was in possession of the diary and was leaking extracts of it in Portugal? That's correct. So what, what did you do to track down the diary, as it were? Um, I phoned, I made contact with two newspapers in Portugal. I was advised that um, one particular journalist was in possession of uh, a copy um, of the diary and made contact with that person. And was that person a Portuguese journalist? That's correct. And was there discussion then about um, how much it might cost to obtain the diary from, I think it was a, a woman, from her? I believe that formed part of the conversation, yeah. Yes. You, of course, did not go out to Portugal yourself, did you? No. You say in your statement that you liaised with Mr Edmondson, who was the, the news editor, was he? That's correct. And was told to ask a freelance journalist called Gerard Cousins, who was based in Spain, to travel to Portugal to meet the journalist and collect the diary. Is that right? That's correct. And it was at that point that the that your involvement, as it were, ceased until the diary arrived in the News of the World's offices on Saturday the 6th of September 2008. Is that correct? That's correct. Can I ask you this, though, in relation to the diary? Were you aware that the, the ultimate source of the diary was the Portuguese police? Uh, I wasn't aware at the time, no. When, when ever at all did you become aware of that fact? Um, I haven't, um, I didn't speculate as to where the diary came from at, at, at the time. Um, yeah. So is, is your evidence you didn't know from where the diary came at the time? All, all, all I knew at the time was that I'd read in the Sun newspaper that there were ac extracts being circulated around Portugal and obviously somebody was responsible for circulating those extracts so I was then asked to make inquiries as to how that was that was the case and, and who was in possession of the of, of a copy of the diary right but you, but you didn't you didn't believe did you that the McCanns had put out the diary in some way N no but I but I didn't speculate at the time where the diary had come from yeah. it's the point I'm trying to make right well you may not have speculated but uh it's quite an interesting question. Were you at all concerned about the provenance of the diary? And we now know that the Portuguese law does not permit all this and that this diary was obtained quite wrongfully. Now, I'm not suggesting you knew that at the time, mm. but uh, I appreciate you were doing the bidding of the news editor, but were you concerned about the provenance of the diary and the propriety of doing what you're being asked to do, or not? Was it just a no, question of being no, told sorry, to do No, sorry, I, I, I don't want to give the impression that I just flippantly, you know, was, was told to find out the source of a diary, and so I, I, and so I did that. Um, you know, a diary is clearly a, a, a private document. Um, but at the time... As I say, this was being publicly circulated around Portugal. Um, what the what the newspaper planned to do with the diary once we were in possession of it, I, I didn't know at the time. Does that does that answer well, your question? Well, I understand that, and it may be that copies are going around Portugal, uh, but you you did not concern yourself. You were simply doing no, the job you were asked to do. Uh, it's not. Every, every story I have ever embarked on with, with the news of the world, um, I considered things like privacy, uh, public interest, and, and you know whether I was adhering to the PCC code. Um, it was clearly a private document, I understand that. Um, but the reality of the situation is, is that at that stage, we weren't in possession of the diary, so we didn't know what we were dealing with. And... Uh, the, the, other, the other point that I think it's very important to make is that, as I understand it, the News of the World had no intention 
of publishing well, that diary. I'm only interested, now you're going to, to, were you told this at the time, or is this something, again, you learned later? Well, was I told About the, the intentions of the news of the world? Oh, no, no, I was, I was told at, at the time yes. that we would not be publishing the, the diary unless we had the specific express permission from the McCanns. I see. Well, we'll come back to some of those questions, I'm sure Mr. Mm. J. will, when you've actually read the translation of the diary. Mm. So were you told by Mr. Edmondson before the diary arrived in the offices of the News of the World, which we know to have been Saturday the 6th of September 2008, that there was no intention of publishing a story based on the diary until the McCann's express consent had been obtained? That was my understanding, that, that, we, that, that there would be a conversation between uh, the News of the World and the McCann's to... Um, to obtain their permission to publish the diary. But were, were you told that by Mr. Edmondson in those terms? Yes. You said that you you weren't going to speculate as to the source of the diary. You also said it was a private document. D did you think at all about the provenance of the diary? My understanding was was that we were going to. The, the news of the world was going to obtain permission from the McCanns. Well, that's a separate issue, um, Mr. Sanderson. There's the issue of obtaining consent, and there's the issue of the provenance of the, the diary. Were you thinking at all about the possible provenance of the diary? Um, of course, of course, I was. Um, My, un my understanding of the situation was that um, at, at the time it's very, very difficult to speculate about the proven provenance of the diary until it was actually in the office. Mm. And, you know, I was, I was a junior reporter at the mm. time. Which Mr. Sarsen, I'm not going to be critical of you in relation to the decisions you've made about this. You were asked to do a job and you did it. Yeah. But uh, one of the things I am required to think about is the culture, practice and ethics of the press, as I'm sure you are very, very aware. Yeah. And therefore, what junior members of staff are thinking about is actually not unimportant. And that's why you're being asked the questions. No, I, and I, I fully appreciate that. Mm. So can you assist us then with your, your answer? Because we, we have a private diary, yeah. and that diary has somehow entered the public domain. Those are the facts which, which you know. Y yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but, but as I've said before, they, they were already in the public domain circulating in Portugal. And I, w and I have to say, I wasn't aware of the judge's comments that you were referring to at the time about it being you know, a private document. I, w I wasn't aware of that at the time. Okay. I think you said earlier that you were aware that it was a private diary. I was, I was aware that it's a private diary. A diary is by definition a private document. Yeah. I accept that and, you know, with hindsight, it was clearly the wrong decision to publish. Okay, well when, when, you, when you come back to the office after the weekend on Tuesday the the 9th of September 2008, Mr. Edmondson, Edmondson pardon me, shows you a copy of the diary. It's all in Portuguese, so it's been translated evidently from, from the original. Was there anything about the, the diary which caused you to speculate as to its source, or was your state of mind the same as it had been previously? Um, thinking back... I mean, it had obviously been translated from English to Portuguese. Um, I mean, the, 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 the source was... I, I, suppose, I suppose, thinking back, it, it must have come from, from the Portuguese police, absolutely. Why do you say that? Um, from memory, um, when I, was, when I was looking through the documents, I believe there were comments on certain pages... I think, I can't remember. Which 
obviously you don't speak Portuguese, but no, but there were there were notes and comments, and it I, I don't know. It looked like a it looked like some kind of official document, if that makes any sense. So was it at that point that you realised that the source was probably the Portuguese? Oh yeah, business? no, absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Did that cause you any concerns? The whole thing caused me concern. Um, the whole thing caused me concern. Okay. Did you share those concerns with Mr. Edmondson? Um, did I share them with Mr. Edmondson? It's it's very very difficult for me to um, try and explain, but essentially my thinking throughout this whole process was that this story was going to be published with the cooperation of the McCanns. Does that make any sense? Yes. So, you know, we were translating the document, we were, um, we were writing the story, we were checking with the McCanns that they were happy with the story. It would be published, the McCanns would know all about it. That was my understanding of the situation throughout. Because, don't, don't forget, I wasn't aware necessarily of what the newspaper planned to do with the diary once it was in the News of the World offices. But once it was in the News of the World offices, the position was that it was translated on a piecemeal basis and that's the right. English translation came back to you, is that correct? That, that's right. We, um, I, I arranged for the diary to be translated from Portuguese back into English. And as you can probably imagine, that was quite a laborious task. Indeed. And when the story, the, pardon me, the translation comes back, do you start writing up the story? That's right, yeah. yeah. Um, the, the translation was coming through in sections, uh, and I was writing the story during the week. And I think, I, th I think it was your concern and also to ascertain that the diary was not a fake, so you were checking the translation against um, internet sources, is that right? That's right. Um, we, we, we looked at the diary, and for every entry we would cross-check that, we would cross-reference that with... Um, Uh, stories that may have appeared um, in the newspapers. So, for example, I think there was an entry, th there was one entry about the McCanns planning to visit, seeing the yes. Pope on that date. In relation to obtaining the agreement of the McCanns, your, your evidence is, and this is um, page 5275, under question 6, just above the lower hole bunch. My understanding of the situation was that Mr. Edmondson had sought per permission to publish the diary from Mr. Mitchell. I acquired this understanding because Mr. Edmondson told me he was going to speak to Mr. Mitchell about the story at the end of the week. So the conversation was likely to take place if it was going to take place on the Friday the 12th of September, is that right? That's my understanding. No. No. Had you completed the story, at least from your end, by the end of the week? Yes. So it follows, does it, that by the time, by the, time the story was given up by you to Mr. Edmondson, you didn't know one way or the other whether the McCann's consent had been obtained? No, my understanding was that the McCann's consent would be obtained. Well, your understanding was, at its highest, that the McCann's would be asked through their agent whether they consented. Is that not the true position? Sorry, can you repeat that? Your understanding was, at its highest, was that... one way or the other, whether the McCanns would give the green light to the publication of this story, did you? And no, but my understanding was that if they hadn't given the green light, then the story wouldn't have been published. Well, your understanding was that if they... 
They didn't give the green light at a point after you provided the story to Mr. Edmondson, um, then the story wouldn't be published. That's, that was my understanding, yeah. Mm. How has the story changed? Yes, well, your copy, how has it changed? Uh, well, um, from memory, um, I wrote uh, a story based on um, based on the ext extract from the diary, and it was changed. It was changed. What 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 essentially happened was that all of my pieces were taken out, and the diary was just published in its entirety, or extracts of the diary were published in their entirety without any without any um, writing from me at all. Does that make sense? So it wasn't a story that you'd written at all, it just became the diary? Basically, yeah. And was that the bits that you had taken out of the diary, or other bits? No, no, that... So, I filed this very long story that had explanations of bits of the extracts in, and the story that appeared in the paper, all of those explanations were taken out and it was just the diary. There was a bit on the front, uh, the front page, that, that I'd written. I see. So the, the front page contained your... It was like an narrative. introduction. It was an introduction. And yeah. then the rest of it were just extracts from the diary, is that yeah. right? So your, your story, as it were, was, was somewhat mutilated, if I can... It, w it was changed, yeah. It was changed. And of course, as, as your statement makes clear, and this is in relation to Mr Edmondson, Edmondson speaking to Mr Mitchell... You say, I didn't actually ever have the conversation with Mr. Edmondson, specifically that he had received permission to publish from the McCann. So no. th this was because, presumably, you'd handed over the story to him before he'd had any conversation with Mr. Mitchell. Is that correct? That, that's true. Yeah, that's the case. You also say in your, your statement, under uh, paragraph 5, but still on page 52725, you say, however, with hindsight, the decision to publish Mrs. McCann's diary was clearly the wrong one. Having read how the article made Mrs. McCann feel, I intend to apologise for her for writing the story once I've given evidence. So you're, you're giving, you're giving that, that apology publicly, and we understand that. Um, but can, can you explain wh why it was clearly the wrong decision, in your, your own words? Uh, yes, I mean... Um I um, I have every intention of apologising to the McCanns for for my involvement in the story. I know that's not your question, but um, that that is my intention. I um, I felt uh, I did feel very bad that my involvement in the story my involvement had made Mrs. McCann feel the, the way that it had. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, why was it the wrong decision to publish? Because they didn't have the permission to. They didn't have Ms. Mrs McCann's permission to publish that story. Can we uh, unpick that a bit too? You read this diary. I did. Some of it is factual. Some what of do you mean, it, what do you mean some, some of it is factual. She's describing events that have happened. Yes. But she's also, it's also an intensely personal document. Yes. As you read it for the first time, did you think you had any business writing a word of it without making sure that this truly was what they wanted? Um... Seeking their permission, seeking the McCann's permission, wasn't in my sphere of responsibility. You see, it's all very well having a conversation with somebody, let's like say, is it all right? Mm. But a lot depends upon the tenor and what, what's actually happening, what's being done. Mm. And uh, uh, one can visualise somebody saying, yes, well, if you're simply going to say I kept a diary, that's fine... Sure. But to reveal the most intimate moments 
may actually re give rise to other considerations which require rather more careful consent. Absolutely. Um, my understanding of the situation was that the news editor um, spoke to the McCann's press secretary on a daily basis. So, in terms of getting the McCann's consent or having those conversations, that really was a job for the news editor. I didn't have the McCann's mobile number. I didn't have the McCann's press secretary's mobile number. The first, the first time um, I spoke to the McCann's press secretary was about three weeks ago when I heard how the story had made Mrs McCann feel and I phoned him to tell him my intention to apologise. And that's not just for this inquiry, that's because I'm genuinely sorry. I'm, I'm sure it is. But did you expect... I appreciate that the word copy approval is uh, never given, but did you expect that in order to get a fully informed consent, effectively the McCanns would be shown what you had written? You, you would have expected that, yes. Can I ask you some general questions about culture in the news of the world? How, how would you define the culture in the news of the world when you were there, Mr. Sanderson? Um, it was um, it was a high high pressure environment to work in. Yes. Anything anything more that you could you could tell us? What what would you like to know? Well, how it manifested itself. Yes how the high pressure manifested itself. Um, in order to work at the News of the World, you have to give a certain part of your life over to it. Um, it's very, very hard work. The phone is constantly... Um, <coughs> phone is constantly on, you can be called evenings, weekends, there's no point making any plans with friends because um, if you do they're likely to be cancelled because the news editor uh, wants you to go on a job. Um, it's, it, it was very hard work, it was very hard work. So you, you do feel you had to, to buy into that as it were? Yeah, I mean, you can't, um, you can't work at the News of the World if you're not prepared to work hard. Was there a culture of bullying, in your view? No. I didn't experience that. You, you heard the question I asked to Mr. Myler, based on Mr. Wallace's evidence, about a certain conception of the story driving the direction into which it's going to, to go and be written. Mm. Did, did you feel that, that that was the position or not? No, I think that's nonsense. And why do you say that? Because, like Mr Myler pointed out earlier on, a, a story only ever appeared in the news of the world if... Well, stories that I worked on, the first thing you did was you made sure it was true. Was that the first thing you did and the last thing you did, or were there other things you did before considering whether it was appropriate to proceed with the story? Well, you, 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 talked about, um, you talked about picking up the phone and um, uh, receiving a tip um, to take you through the process. You know, the first thing you did when you received the tip was ascertained whether the tip was true. I mean, there were other things, like, for example, you picked up the phone and you saw... you. you, you 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 um you worked out whether the uh, story was appropriate for the news of the world, so you used your news values and your experience of the newspaper to see whether that story that the person is phoning in with is appropriate to the news of the world. Um, and 
and then you went about proving that it was true. It was never, it, it was never that you sat there thinking, oh, well, you know, um, uh, you know, let, let's make up this story about this person. Yeah, the story had to be true. And how did you go about verifying it's true? Well, it, there, were, there were numerous processes that you went through um, to prove a story was true. Um, do you want to know them? Or? Yes. I mean, for example, um, with any story, if you, if you met somebody with a story for the news of the world, the first thing that you did was you sit down and say, OK, you're telling me this story. What evidence have you got that what you're telling me is the truth? OK? And so there'd be things like text messages. You're telling me something. How can you then prove that that's, that's true? Can you show me text messages that prove what you're saying is true? Can you show me credit card bills? You said you were somewhere. Can you prove that for me? Are there other people who will back up your story? Will you sign an affidavit saying that what you're telling me is the truth? There were, there were so many levels that you went through to prove that a story is true. Because you're the first gatekeeper, if you like, and then that story that you've, you've managed to establish is true, then goes to the news editor and then goes up to the editor. And then in terms of compliance with the PCC code, in particular privacy issues, but that's not the only issue, what process, if any, do you go through to satisfy yourself that those matters are being addressed? Well, the, 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 the whole time that you're operating as a journalist, you, you've, got the, you've got the PCC code, you're, you're considering the PCC code at at, at every level. Well, you, you've given us a very precise process, if I may say so, so in terms of verifying fact or verifying I'm, I'm, evidence. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to explain to somebody who might not know the intricacies of the of the operation that that's generally how you work. But in relation to the code, very often it's a balancing exercise between rights of individuals and the public interest. Yeah. Is, is that a process you were familiar with? It, it's something that you have to think about as a journalist every day. You have to consider the PCC code. And I think Colin, uh, Mr. Myler, uh, said earlier it's about personal standards. And you have to maintain those personal standards while you're operating as a journalist. Now, were there occasions when, apart from the case we've been discussing, when you felt un uncomfortable in relation to your obligations under the code, under the one hand, and what you were being tasked to do in relation to a particular story on the other? No. Okay, thank you, Mr. Samson. Facts are one thing. What about comment? What's about comment? Yes. Uh, uh, newspaper stories do not merely consist of a recitation of facts. They are uh, then the subject of comment, which actually then provides the focus of the story, doesn't it? Yeah. Would that comment be yours or one of your more senior managers um, I'm sorry I, I don't really I, don't I want follow. to know to what extent did you include within your stories comment and uh, context which was yours rather than the facts that you'd actually simply been given um, you, you, you got the facts and then you, you wrote the story. With your own comments to it? I was quite factual when I wrote my stories. I didn't really add comment. You didn't add comment. Did you ever see that comment was added? Um, stories are sometimes changed by sub-editors. So you'd, you'd write a story, you'd send that through to the news editor, you'd, they'd send it through to the, the sub-editors, and it would, it would be changed to fit with the with the space of the page but 
yeah. but not in any sense to change the the slant of the story. Not in my experience. I see. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sanderson. I think that the next witness is due to start at two, so we can have a slightly longer. Very good. We'll have a. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dee. Rise.